got a one, a two, a three, and a hey now. Metal Mike with a subdued hey now in the bunker. It is Friday. It is, uh, let's see what time it is we got. We got 1.22 in the afternoon. I'm on full children duty for the whole day. My youngest two-year-old is down for the nap right now. I got two coming home, one at 2.20, one at 3.30. So right now I got a little window. Why not shoot a video for you, right? Uh, I wanted to, uh, I, I had gone to that estate garage sale, which I had found on Craigslist yesterday. Um, I didn't find it yesterday. I had found it maybe three days prior. And it was really a, a unique situation due to the fact that you, you tend to, when you find garage sales, estate sales, uh, you have a basic garage sale. And then we have the basic estate sale, simply meaning 99% of the time, 0.9. It's going to be run by an estate business that, you know, they've gone in, they've priced every freaking thing. It's uh, been salt and peppered, which means they've even put some of their own items into the sale. Uh, really hard to do well at one of those situations. Hate to slam it for you and knock the wind out for you. There's money to be made there. Yeah, of course, no doubt. But believe it, that everything has been set somewhere for their buddies, the dealers, to come in and scoop it up. That stuff doesn't slip through the cracks. Uh... But what you, where you can find an amazing treasure is if the family themselves are putting on the estate sale. And that's what happened yesterday. Did we find any, um, let's see, over $100 items? Oh, hell no. And I don't even give a shit. I, I am out picking for the pure passion of what I like. I like the history of the item. I like the patina of the item. I like to save this stuff. I like to sell it. And I believe I do damn well at it. And it's a green thumb for finding this stuff. I have a unique taste in it. Uh, I'm specific yet across the board, man. If it's got, if it looks cool to me, I'm bringing it home. That's right. So that aside, yesterday was awesome. That was set up by the family. One member that was left. It seemed there was no one else there. And we got some fun stuff, man. We got to get in a house with a low volume of people. It had basically only been picked over maybe by family and maybe some insiders, you know, whatever. I got some sleepers in there. Let me tell you that. I'll make that clear. And one piece I got yesterday that didn't make the video just by mistake, I forgot. I'm going to show it right now because that's what this video is about. The antique etched meter. Here we go. This is what we're talking about. Million dollar piece? Oh, hell no. But a fun old piece. It's got a dog on it. I believe it's reverse glass etched. A really thick mirror as well. And, and uh, yeah, it's smoky. Yeah, it's got some patina. But the etching part, if you'll notice, very well done. It's not signed anywhere. But it's no damage. Yeah, there's a little fading. The frame was cool as hell. It's pretty beat up. Not much left. Of, not too tasty, let's call it. With chunks missing like that. But a real thick piece of glass. And here we go. Let's show the back. This is the fun. This is what we're talking about. This is original to the frame. As it sits. It's got the, and this is always fun. You can really date it too. Usually when they get the long wire on it. Uh, they would love to show the wire. In the, in the days past. So there you go. That's what we got. That cool mirror. I'm on the fence with it. It's kind of an eBay piece. You know, hit and miss. But I, I kind of dig it. It might make the private collection. It might make the wall. Even in that condition. I love that kind of condition. It reminds me of the Munsters and the Adams family. That's what I'm all about, man. That's where this all started. Growing up as a young boy, going to the junkyard with my grandpa, man. My grandpa. I'm starting to sound a little too much like Hulk Hogan. Hey now, listen, brother. <laughs> but hey, that's where it all started, man. Just junk, a cool freaking item in a cigar box, a trinket. Uh, that's what I love, man. Digging in a dumpster, an old dusty house. I got up in the attic of that house yesterday. Only found those trains really. Did I miss something? I don't think so. It's feasible that I did. Kind of tore through there pretty brutally. Um, but man, it was dusty. It was dirty. 
and it's still just fun to get out there and get in there. Do your homework. You know, you got to do your digging. You can do it. You just got to keep banging. And always, you know, when these people are having these sales, you've got to make an attempt to get in there early. If someone says they're having a huge garage sale, I always email them now if it looks tempting, you know, if it looks like it could be one worth going to, if it's nearby so I know I can get there quick. I always try to get in a day or two early if I can. How successful have I been at that? Well, I haven't pursued it too much in my career of doing this stuff. I've always done just with the pure passion, raw, getting out there, no different than this video shooting from the hip, unscripted, that's how I do my picking as well. You know, just getting out in there, beating the streets, man. Driving, 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 hunting. Um, not too many connections, very rare, very rare. It's all about getting out there and sniffing it out, man. Digging for the gold, running that dirt. That's the reality of it. No different than going fishing, casting that line a thousand times. But you're gonna pluck some fun stuff, man, and you know, it, there's two aspects to this that people look at. The one where they're going to just make huge money and be rich. That's cool, man. Uh, I myself, uh, I truly believe every person is going to find the one piece that can put them over the top. And what does that mean, put you over the top? What can that one piece realistically do for you if it's not a million dollar piece, right? Well, it can get you a new truck. It could get you a building. It could get you uh, maybe down payment on two trucks and a building. That's what you want to be building towards because once you get into that position where you've got trucks and you've got a building, well, how you can really get going doing some advertising, just getting out there and banging it, man. And what does that mean, getting out there and banging it? That sounds ridiculous, right? But yeah, that's just a little bit of slang thrown in there for getting out there daily, man, and freaking hammering it. It's fun. There's nothing like it. I've got moments uh, where I've gotten into houses and old garages that are dusty and dirty, and I got to dig and dig and dig. Now, did I find $1,000 pieces and big money? No, but I found some really freaking cool shit. And I made some really good money at the time that was able to put food on the table for my kids and help. There was nothing like digging in those places. That's what I want you guys to do, man. Get out there. Um, think outside the norm. All the pickers and dealers are hitting all the estate sales. Let's face it. When I sit there and I say shoot from the hip, go on a cold drive, that means basically just go out there. Go to an area of town you know well. Drive it. Map it out, man. Hit it like a route. Carve that fucker. Uh, look for long alleys. Shoot down them. When you're driving, you're going somewhere. You can make a cut through through some alleys. Freaking do it. You never know what you're going to see sitting by a curb. You're never going to know if you're going to spot an old lady who's in her garage. Remember, have a calling card and be ready to stop and present yourself nicely and respectfully. And, of course, people are cautious nowadays, right? It's an effed up world out there. But if you carry yourself respectfully, not too pushy, and when I mean not too pushy, simply give them your card, you know, don't impose. If the person gets a good vibe of you and you're a good person, they're going to pull you in. I had it happen too many times. They would just be so kind to me. They'd say, well, come on in, you know, you want to haul some junk away from me? Sure, you know. And I would get some really cool stuff, and it was fun. And that's, you know, you just it, it begins the empire that you seek, whether that be just a collection that's all yours, a storefront that's all yours, selling online, doing it just as a hobby, hunting for that specific piece that you love, be it model cars, antique toys, uh, military items, man. That's one thing I do advise, though, for uh, guys out there that are in this business. You know, we run across so many things that are cool as hell, and we want to keep everything, right? But we can't, because if, if you're out there and you're selling this stuff, you need to keep it moving. you got to keep the wheels oiled. you got to keep everything moving along, and if you held everything, well, you'd go broke. So you got to sell it. But maybe try to keep the most unique, interesting pieces with the awesome story behind them that are nice and stash them for retirement. Basically, your stash. Uh, and if not, think of a field in collecting that you like. What do you freaking love? What as a boy did you collect? Was it Hot Wheels? Was it, a, you know, was it a German helmet? Was it comic books? Go back to your childhood. Remember the kid inside. Because that's what drives us all. That's where all the passion is. 
that's where it's at. You tap into that. What did you like as a kid if you collected anything? Is it baseball cards, football cards, uh, record albums? <laughs> that's freaking fun. Uh, military, uh, old toys, old toy trucks. Maybe you had an old toy truck and it kind of will spark that collection. Try to focus then in that field for your own private collection. Sell everything else, you know. Uh, and only keep the stuff you really love. And smalls for retirement too is smart. But if you're a big boy and you got big money and you got a big barn and you can put cars and everything in there, I say go for it, man. Stack it up. But try to keep it somewhat contained. You see a lot on these American Pickers and all these picking shows where they get into these collections. A lot of it is lost to water damage, rodents, uh, even just falling over and breaking. So, you know, man try to keep it together. I, I, some of these collections you see where they've got six, seven, eight, ten buildings full. Uh, how can you keep on top of it, I guess? But I would advise if that's your situation, sell it and keep the high end. Have one barn full. <laughs> so anyway, everyone out there, it's a Friday. i got a long day ahead of me, man. i got this. Hey, now I'm going to chow some pizza tonight, though. Not good for you, right? I don't give a damn. I'm going to eat some pizza. Hey now, better life, always haunting, always picking, I can't wait to get in a freaking old attic, man, itching to get in one, oh, so close, it's going to happen.